Patrick, the Premier has warned Victorians not to become overconfident. That's right, Tom. 322 new cases of coronavirus in Victoria over the past 24 hours. That is the biggest dip we've seen in case numbers since the start of this second wave, though that positive news has been somewhat marred by the fact that today is also the deadliest day on record for Victoria. 19 deaths recorded over the past 24 hours, 14 of those linked to aged care settings. It's the second time in as many days that that unenviable record has been broken. Uh, 36 Victorians have died over the past three days days. We're on track to hit well over 100 by the end of the week if it continues at this rate. And sadly, further deaths are expected as well. There are 640 Victorians currently in hospital, 47 of those in ICU, 31 of those fighting for their lives on ventilators. It's now been more than a month since those stage three restrictions were reintroduced for the Melbourne area. And some early positive signs, the average daily caseload has been decreasing. Stage four yet to show its effect in the numbers. That'll be another week or so before we start to see any of that. The Premier, though, has warned people not to jump for joy just yet, uh, that you can't uh, make conclusions based on a single data point such as today. I know there'll be questions about whether the relatively low number today marks any point of uh, significance. Just in advance of that, I understand where those questions come from, but I think we've all got to be very careful not to be getting ahead of ourselves. We have uh, one day's data. It's always better to be lower than it was the previous day but it is only one day's data. As the number of active coronavirus cases in Victoria continues to climb, the effect is becoming apparent on the state's uh, healthcare workforce. There are now well over 1,000 active infections within that healthcare workforce in Victoria, a figure that's doubled over the past fortnight when there were only 400 or so active infections. Now, this has sparked fears of shortages in our hospitals. Premier Daniel Andrews, though, was quick to allay those fears in that media conference. He says he's confident that not only is there the uh, workforce that's adequate to take us through to the end of the pandemic, but also the PPE uh, to take us through as well. There's no issue about the quantities that we've got. The distribution network is, uh, I think, working well, uh, but no system's perfect. It may need to improve further. Of course, Tom, that medical workforce is being bolstered by help from the ADF as well as teams from interstate. The latest contingent, a group of nurses from WA, will arrive in Victoria later this week. Patrick Murrell, thank you. To Andrea Crothers now. And Andrea, the government has launched its latest advertising campaign. An interesting focus here. The line we've heard from a lot of people since this started is, well, for most people, isn't it just a cold? And this campaign seeking to counter that. That's right, Tom. More personal stories, more powerful messages as the government really tries to keep Victorians on the right path as they struggle to keep them within these stage four lockdown rules. Now, as you said, it's really about sort of debunking that myth that it's just like getting over the common cold. What we'll see in this current series, this new campaign, it's all about the impact on quality of life, particularly after the virus is fought off. I didn't know how serious it was. They thought that I might not live through the first night. Every day there was virtually no improvement. I'm fearful of um, brain damage. COVID has affected me physically. I have um, a weakness all down my right side. Now, this series will be published across all platforms. Also, on top of that, there'll be nurses who will be providing their own messages in a host of different languages as the government really tries to get this out to as many people as possible. Premier Daniel Andrews is saying that this is just another reminder of what's at stake. Think about the person who is most important to you and then think about them with a tube to help them breathe in intensive care for 32 days. That's how serious this is. And the government is also launching a new testing campaign called Call to Test. It's all about getting the tests out to those who can't actually get to testing centres. So effectively the way it works is someone can call the coronavirus hotline, say that they need to get a test done and someone will come to their house within 48 hours. For some vulnerable people, for some people who might be housebound due to disability or other chronic health conditions, it is challenging for them to be able to present to a testing station. And we want to make sure that every Victorian has the opportunity to be tested uh, for coronavirus. In terms of the capacity, it will be about 200 tests a day that can be done. So when you think about it, only a really a fraction of the number of tests that are being conducted daily, Tom. But the health minister says it's all about trying to ensure that everyone who needs a test can get one done.